Today on the channel, we're gonna take a look at first impressions on Freyden. Freyden? Freyden. 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 I don't know how you say it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at Freyden, like I mentioned at the top of the video. This is volume one. Now I do have volume two, but it did not arrive in time for the making of this video, so we're just gonna focus on the first volume, a sort of uh, first impression spaces on the series and how it can move forward from that, my overall impressions on it. So what the heck is this series about? We follow the character of Frieren, a near immortal elf. She has a ridiculously long lifespan compared to other uh, people and creatures of this fantasy world and the story takes place after the main journey of our heroes is ended. Now if you follow uh, fantasy series or novels or you play JRPG games or regular RPG stuff you know that you form a band of heroes and you have a quest and all that stuff and at the end you destroy the evil bad guy, the demon lord or whatever creature it may be and everybody you know you save the kingdom you move onward on your separate ways. We follow the character of Frieren and her journey now that the main one has ended, how does she move forward from that? And when the main hero passes away of old age, it really comes at a realization, sort of an epiphany to our main character and how she views life, how she views the difference in age and how precious time really is, even though she's uh, nearly an immortal due to her long lifespan and you know for a regular human we don't live that long and she sort of uh has a resentment she wishes that she could have talked to Paimo and then probably butchered his name uh a little bit more and, and gotten to know him better and that is one of the many themes explored in this series after the funeral how do you move on from there she comes to the realization that she wants to go on a journey of her own. She's a fan of collecting magic, a weird magic, going through the land and helping people and just experiencing life from a different perspective. Because to her, going to see something might be, you know, a couple of years might be what to us would be a couple of days. And for some other people, it would be a whole lifetime. And that in a nutshell is sort of the basis for the story. It's not a super complex tale. It's more of a character driven narrative of Frieden who at first glance might seem cold and calculating and not as lively as you would think. And you see that reflected on their friend's funeral when one of the uh, mourners uh, takes notice of her and thought that she couldn't express such emotions, which was a shock. And she sort of wishes to have had more time to know more about her friends, not just on this journey that they went through. Because even though it was 10 years, sometimes like in real life, we're just so hyper-focused on the task at hand that we don't take a moment to appreciate everything around us and the people that help us and guide us through uh, whatever task it may be, and the good times and the bad times and stuff like that. The majority of what soon follows is her taking on a young uh, human mage apprentice and going on different adventures and tasks, uh, helping out people and earning uh, new magic spells as a result. So the story might not be the most exciting thing if you're looking for a, a fantasy epic of combat and like super amazing action scenes and spells and wizardry fight and you're not gonna get any of that. Instead, you have a character that is forced due to tragic circumstances to sort of reevaluate uh, what it means to live and experience things from a different perspective as well as something very important that rarely gets discussed in manga and that is the concept. Uh, of what lies beyond uh, grief. And when you mourn someone, what happens afterwards? How do you continue to honor that person? How do you continue that legacy? And sort of the after effects of losing a friend or a loved one, how do you move forward from that? Maybe traveling back to the loved one's town or, you know, retracing uh, your steps with that person on your journey in the case of our characters, she uh, decides to go back and retrace their quest to see all the sights and sounds and the villages and all that stuff 
And eventually she comes to see the fruits of their labor as people uh, worship these guys because they saved the whole entire uh, kingdom or country or whatever. And it sort of gives her a new perspective. And having that legacy of your loved ones that are no longer there and having these characters sort of motivate you and push you forward uh, from beyond the grave, if you will. You know, speaking of Freyden, I found her to be a great lead character. She may seem cold, calculating, and detached from humanity, but she's brimming with personality. Sometimes a little lazy, sometimes not as open as you would like, but Frieden cares and wants to help the populace. She's on this quest to re-examine what she knew and find more about her friends for her betterment. This is evident by her taking on an apprentice at the request of one of her former party members. Through this, she further comprehends humans and our complex personalities. Now, the art in Frieden is really nice. It's simple. It's well-drawn. The characters are all distinct and beautiful to look at, from the oldest person to the youngest to our uh, protagonist. They all look unique, and you instantly remember who they are. Clean lines all throughout, beautiful backgrounds. When there are scenes of magic or maybe a few combat scenes that we see in this first volume, they're nicely laid out. Everything looks top tier, just wonderful overall. It has that sense of otherworldliness. <laughs> like you could see uh, it being sort of a portal to this other world and it looks alive and you want to partake in it. Especially the scenes where Frieden with her apprentice are looking for a blue flower. And that whole scene just had such whimsy to it that I really enjoyed. It was just a really nice breath of fresh air. And certainly the story picks up at the end of the book when you have some revelations about uh, Frieden's origin, if you will, and how it moves into uh, the next portion, the next part of that legacy of honoring those that are no longer with us going on this grand adventure and meeting with old acquaintances who are now older and sort of reflecting with you on past experiences. So yeah, a, a very interesting manga. I cannot wait to continue reading this. Obviously I'm getting it physically, so it's gonna take a while to read uh, more and more chapters, but what I've read so far, I really do enjoy. It's a, it's a breath of fresh air, well-written, great characters, fantastic, beautiful artwork. And I think just an, uh, a nice introspective look at subjects that rarely gets discussed in manga. How about you guys? Have you read Frieren? Are you currently reading it as it comes out? Let me know in the comment section down below. Now, I'm a huge fan of elvish characters in anime and manga. That's one of my favorite tropes. So I have this question for you guys. What are some must read manga involving elves that you think I need to check out and highlight on this channel? Guys, thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of A Week in Geekdom. It truly does mean a whole lot. If you wanna see more of this content where I talk about anime and manga, be sure to subscribe, share the video if you can. It really does help the channel grow and reach more audiences. That's it for now. God bless, stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.